Welcome to our show, The World Brief. Today, we have some fascinating stories lined up for you. First, we dive into the stormy seas of international relations as China and Vietnam strengthen their ties in the wake of Super Typhoon Yagi's devastation. This collaboration marks a significant shift, showcasing how natural disasters can sometimes pave the way for improved diplomacy. Next up, we turn our attention to the tech world where Elon Musk's social network, X, has made a surprising compliance move with a Brazilian Supreme Court order after weeks of resistance. This turn of events highlights the ongoing tug-of-war between tech giants and government regulations, making it a story you won't want to miss. Lastly, we explore the rising popularity of pickleball in Asia, with predictions that Asian players could soon knock the USA stars off their perch. With the sport being backed for Olympic status, it's an exciting time for pickleball enthusiasts. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these intriguing stories. SCMP opinion highlights a significant shift in relations between Vietnam and China following the devastating impact of Super Typhoon Yagi. The storm, which struck Vietnam on September 7, resulted in over 290 fatalities and damages amounting to approximately $1.6 billion. In a display of cooperation, China promptly assisted Vietnam by managing water levels in the Red River's reservoirs to alleviate flooding, signaling a move towards improved communication and collaboration between the two nations. This newfound partnership comes amidst a backdrop of historical tensions, particularly concerning territorial disputes in the South China Sea and concerns over China's hydropower projects. As both countries navigate their complex relationship, the hope is that this cooperation will extend beyond disaster response and foster a more stable and constructive bilateral relationship. The New York Times reports on Elon Musk's unexpected capitulation in Brazil, where his social network, X, has finally complied with orders from the Brazilian Supreme Court after weeks of defiance. Musk had previously characterized the court's demands as illegal and refused to adhere to them, even dismissing local employees and incurring fines. However, in a surprising turn of events, X's legal team announced that they had complied with the court's requests, including removing accounts deemed threatening to Brazil's democracy. This reversal is seen as a setback for Musk, who has positioned himself as a champion of free speech, it illustrates the ongoing struggle between tech companies and governmental authority, with the latter often maintaining the upper hand in regulatory matters. According to the South China Morning Post, Steve Kuhn, a key figure in the global rise of pickleball, predicts that Asian players will soon dominate the sport, potentially surpassing their American counterparts. With the opening of Hong Kong's first indoor pickleball club, Kuhn aims to expand the sport's presence in Asia, drawing parallels to the success of table tennis, which has become synonymous with Asian excellence despite its English origins. He believes that the sport could gain Olympic status, further elevating its profile and creating new medal opportunities. Kuhn emphasizes the accessibility and social nature of pickleball, which allows newcomers to enjoy the game immediately, fostering a sense of community. His vision includes inspiring stories of players from diverse backgrounds rising to prominence, which he believes will ignite a passion for pickleball across the continent in the coming years. South China Morning Post reports that China's recent decision to abstain from signing an international declaration aimed at maintaining human control over nuclear weapons decisions has raised eyebrows globally. This move came after the responsible AI in the military domain conference in South Korea, where over 60 countries, including the US and Ukraine, endorsed a commitment to prevent AI from making critical military decisions. Analysts suggest that China's reluctance stems from its ongoing rivalry with the US in military AI development and its desire to retain flexibility in its nuclear strategy. Experts like Tong Zhao emphasize that China is cautious about making commitments that could limit its future military options, particularly as tensions escalate between the two superpowers. The conference concluded with a blueprint for action, emphasizing ethical AI use in military applications but China's absence highlights the challenges of achieving global consensus on AI regulations amid geopolitical strife. Deutsche Welle provides updates on the ongoing conflict in Ukraine, reporting that Ukrainian forces have successfully targeted and destroyed two military ammunition depots in Russia, located in the Krasnodar and Tver regions. This strategic move aims to disrupt Russian military supplies as Ukraine continues to face missile attacks, including a recent strike on the city of Krivi Rih that resulted in three fatalities. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has signed a new law to increase military spending significantly, reflecting the urgency of the situation as the country prepares for ongoing hostilities. Meanwhile, Russia has retaliated with strikes on Ukrainian energy facilities, indicating a continued escalation in the conflict. Despite the grim circumstances, Ukraine remains resolute in its military operations, 
emphasizing the importance of international support and collaboration in its fight against Russian aggression. South China Morning Post also highlights the urgent call from Liu Shijin, a former top government advisor, for China to implement a significant stimulus package of at least 10 trillion yuan, approximately 1.42 trillion US dollars, to revitalize its struggling economy. Liu's proposal comes in the context of declining domestic demand and a prolonged real estate slump that have hindered China's growth targets. He suggests that the stimulus should focus on improving public services for rural migrant workers and enhancing housing options to stimulate consumption. Liu warns against merely replicating Western quantitative easing strategies, advocating instead for targeted reforms that address China's unique economic challenges. As the nation grapples with slow growth and diminished consumer confidence, Liu's insights underline the necessity for a balanced approach that fosters sustainable economic recovery while mitigating risks associated with rapid policy shifts. New York Times reports that Ukraine has intensified its military efforts by striking two significant ammunition depots within Russia, aiming to disrupt the logistics of the Russian military. These attacks, which occurred near Toropets and Tykoretsk, were notable for their distance from Ukrainian-controlled areas, over 200 miles away. The Ukrainian army has not disclosed the specific weapons used, suggesting the possibility of new technologies in their arsenal. The strikes prompted evacuations in the affected regions, with local authorities acknowledging drone attacks that resulted in explosions. This action follows a recent pattern of Ukrainian assaults on Russian military infrastructure, as Kiev seeks to gain an upper hand on the battlefield. South China Morning Post highlights the resilience of Hong Kong's rugby teams in the Asia Rugby 7 series, particularly the women's squad, which has advanced to the semi-finals despite missing key players. The team showcased impressive performances, with standout player Stephanie Chan leading the charge in victories against Malaysia and the UAE. The men's team also dominated their pool matches, setting up a thrilling semi-final against China, a rematch from their previous encounter. Both teams are focused on refining their skills and strategies as they prepare for tougher challenges ahead, with coaches emphasizing the need for consistency and accuracy in their gameplay. South China Morning Post also delves into the impact of China's economic downturn on the funeral industry, revealing a significant decline in revenue for major cemetery and funeral service providers. Fu Shouyuan reported a staggering 30% drop in revenue, attributing this to cautious consumer spending and the challenging economic landscape. The company noted that fewer graves were sold, despite a slight price reduction, as families are increasingly hesitant to make such significant financial commitments. The report highlights broader demographic concerns, including a rapidly aging population and a declining birth rate, which are expected to exacerbate the challenges facing the industry. Traditional burial customs are still deeply rooted in Chinese culture, yet the rising costs have led some to seek alternative options, such as virtual graves or smaller burial spaces in less populated areas. Yahoo! US reports on China's booming shipbuilding industry, which is rapidly enhancing its naval capabilities and modernizing its military. The country's shipyards, particularly those located on Chongqing Island, are producing advanced warships, including China's third aircraft carrier, at an unprecedented rate. With estimates suggesting that China's shipbuilding capacity is over 230 times that of the United States, it currently holds about 50% of the global shipbuilding market. The People's Liberation Army Navy has grown to become the largest in the world, boasting over 370 operational platforms, and projections indicate that this number could rise to 435 by 2030. Notable shipyards like Dalian, Jiangnan, and Hudongzhonghua are central to this expansion, reflecting China's commitment to both military and commercial shipbuilding. Al Jazeera announces that Real Madrid will compete in the inaugural FIFA Intercontinental Cup final in Qatar on December 18 coinciding with Qatar's National Day and the two-year anniversary of the 2022 World Cup final. This new tournament will feature club teams from around the globe and replaces the traditional club World Cup format. The event will showcase top-tier football talent, with the final expected to draw significant attention as it celebrates Qatar's ability to host world-class sporting events. The tournament's structure includes a series of matches leading up to the final, with local teams participating in the early rounds to engage fans and promote regional club football. South China Morning Post covers a poignant moment during Malaysian King Sultan Ibrahim Iskandar's state visit to China, where he became emotional while discussing his late son with President Xi Jinping. The visit marks the 50th anniversary of diplomatic relations between Malaysia and China and is significant as it is the first visit by a Malaysian monarch in a decade. 
Sultan Ibrahim shared memories of his son, Tunku Abdul Jalil, who passed away after battling liver cancer, expressing gratitude for the medical care he received in China. The king also revealed a familial connection to China, which moved President Xi, leading to a promise to explore the genealogy of the Sultan's family. The discussions also touched on enhancing cooperation between Malaysia and China, particularly concerning regional stability in the South China Sea and infrastructure projects under the Belt and Road Initiative. Deutsche Welle reports on the case of Chu Kaipong, a 27-year-old man who has become the first individual sentenced under Hong Kong's stringent new national security law. Convicted for wearing a t-shirt emblazoned with the provocative slogan, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times, Chu received a 14-month prison sentence. This slogan, a rallying cry during the 2019 protests, was deemed by authorities as a call for Hong Kong's separation from China, a significant violation in the eyes of Beijing. This case highlights the law's harsh penalties for seditious acts, increasing the maximum jail term from two years to seven years, a move critics argue further suppresses free speech in the region. Chu had previously been sentenced to three months in jail under an older law for wearing another politically charged shirt, demonstrating a pattern of escalating legal consequences for dissent. CNN delves into the tragic sinking of the superyacht Bayesian off the coast of Sicily, which resulted in the deaths of eight individuals, including British tech entrepreneur Mike Lynch. As investigators probe the wreck, concerns arise over the potential presence of sensitive intelligence data stored in watertight safes aboard the vessel. Lynch, known for his ties to various intelligence agencies through his cybersecurity company Darktrace, was reportedly cautious about data security, keeping encrypted drives on the yacht. The incident, which occurred during a violent storm, has led to a criminal investigation into the circumstances of the sinking, while divers and authorities are now focused on securing the wreck to prevent foreign governments from accessing any classified information that may still be on board. The tragedy is compounded by the fact that Lynch's business partner had passed away on the same day, adding an emotional layer to the already complex situation. South China Morning Post highlights China's new initiative aimed at encouraging the elderly to engage in volunteer work as the nation faces a declining workforce and an aging population. The National Committee on Aging has released guidelines to enhance the Silver Age Action Program, which promotes volunteerism among seniors, urging them to support community services and assist in underdeveloped areas. With over 297 million citizens aged 60 and above, representing over 21% of the population, the initiative seeks to harness the skills and experiences of older adults to bolster social engagement and economic development. Local authorities are encouraged to create opportunities for the elderly to participate in various activities, from childcare to support for disadvantaged children. As part of a broader strategy to address demographic challenges, the program aims to institutionalize volunteerism among seniors by 2026, reflecting a shift in how society values the contributions of its older members. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Scrolling through the headlines, another crazy day. Six degrees of stories connecting in a way from the weather to the sports and everything we see. People making news on TV screens for free. Six degree world where the news comes in a world. Every story ties together like a ribbon. Sit back and watch it all Big and small they call From city lights to countryside We're connected after all